Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Anatomy and today we'll be discussing the attachments of the tibia bone which is the medial bone of the leg. We've already studied the bony features and if you haven't watched that video, go check it out. So let's begin the tibial attachments from its upper end. The attachments of the upper end are quite important because the intercondylar area has some attachments from the anterior to posterior side that are going to be very vital for your examination. First, let's talk about the condyles. If you all remember, I mentioned a a groove on the posterior aspect of your medial condyle and a groove posterior aspect of your lateral condyle. So these two grooves that are on the posterior aspects of the two condyles consist of the attachment to the semitendinosus and the tendon of popliteus. All right. Then we have the capsular ligament of the knee joint on the margins and then we have this facet, this posterior inferior aspect showing the fibular facet which consists of the superior tibiofibular joints capsular ligament. Apart from that, we had the Jerdes tubercle, which was on the anterior aspect of the lateral condyle of the tibia, which is a flat impression. Now, this consists of the attachment of the iliotibial tract. Very important. Once again, the tibial tuberosity's upper smooth part consists of attachment of ligamentum patella. The lower part consists of a bursa called the infrapatellar bursa, and it's directly lying in contact with the skin. Now, let's talk about the attachments of the intercondylar area from before backwards. That means from, starting from the anterior side, we all know that the tibial tuberosity is on the anterior side. So let's start from here and go all the way back. So we all know that basically the knee joint or this articular area consists of a couple of meniscus like the lateral and medial meniscus. And then we have the cruciate ligaments. There are the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments of the knee joint. Uh, so these are the important structures that are in the knee joint. So just like that, let's begin from the anterior side, most medially we have the anterior horn of the medial meniscus. As you can see, this begins first. Then going backwards, we have the anterior cruciate ligament of the knee joint. Coming back more laterally, we have the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus. Starting from behind the intercondylar eminence, the first attachment we have is the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus. So you can say that the lateral meniscus begins right in front of intercondylar eminence and it ends also right behind it because it is a smaller condyle, so it is shorter. After that, we have the posterior horn of the medial meniscus because it's quite large. And finally, most posterior structure is the posterior cruciate ligament. So once again, most anteriorly is the anterior horn of the medial meniscus then we have the anterior cruciate ligament, the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus, posterior horn of the lateral meniscus, the posterior horn of the medial meniscus and finally the posterior cruciate ligament. Now let's talk about the attachments on the surfaces. So we all know this is the anterior border and this is the medial surface. The medial surface is mostly subcutaneous. However, its upper part it has attachments. Now these are very important attachments. From anterior to posterior we have the SGS muscles and then the tibial collateral ligament. So it's SGS and tibial collateral ligament. S for sartorius, which is an anterior compartment muscle, G for gracilis, which is a medial compartment muscle, and S for semitendinosus, a posterior compartment muscle. So realize that there are three compartment muscles. And finally, on the medial border, we had the tibial collateral ligament of the knee joint. So this is the attachment on the medial surface of your tibia. Coming to the lateral surface, as you all remember, the concave surface, on the upper two thirds of the lateral surface, we have the tibialis anterior muscle attachment. Let's go to the posterior surface now. We all remember there was a solial line. Now the solial line has made it quite simple along with the vertical ridge. Above the solial line, the triangular area is for the attachment of popliteus muscle. On the soleus line is the soleus muscle the fascia covering the soleus muscle and the fascia covering the popliteus muscle. Below the soleal line, we had a vertical ridge dividing your posterior surface into a medial and lateral part. The medial part consists of the flexor digitorum longus attachment and the lateral part consists of the tibialis posterior. So just because the lateral surface of the tibia is consisting of your tibialis anterior, this will consist of tibialis posterior right close to it. And apart from this, the attachments on the lower end include mostly the capsular ligament of the ankle joint and the medial malleolus lower end consists of the attachment of the deltoid ligament. The nutrient artery is located as we already talked about on the upper part of the vertical ridge on the posterior surface of the tibia. Now the nutrient artery is derived from posterior tibial artery and it is directed downwards. 
So these were the attachments of the tibia. Now let's talk about the lower end of the tibia, the structures passing below. Now the structures coming from medial to lateral side below are as follows. So let's talk about the structures that are passing the tibia's lower end on its anterior part. This is very important from medial to lateral side. Just like in your hand, we had the various grooves that used to pass from medial to lateral side in your uh, wrist. Similarly, we have this in the ankle. Coming from the medial to the lateral side, we have the tendon of the tibialis anterior for the T. X standing for the extensor hallucis longus tendon. A stands for the artery, the anterior tibial artery. D is for a nerve, the deep peroneal nerve. ED is for the extensor digitorum longus tendon. And P is for the peroneus tertius tendon. All right. Let's go posteriorly. So the posterior part of the lower end of the tibia is grooved for the passage of the following structures from the medial to the lateral side. Most medial is the tibialis posterior muscle. As we all remember, the tibialis posterior was coming from the lateral side of the vertical ridge. All right. So it would cross and it would go to the most medial part. So this groove you can actually appreciate on the bone. Tibialis posterior. And then came your muscle of the medial side, which was what the flexor digitorum longus which also crossed and went here a little more lateral then we have the artery and nerve the artery is the posterior tibial artery tibial nerve and finally the flexor hallucis longus tendon so that was all for the attachments of the tibia really hope you understood well don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you so much for watching